the first kind of just really general question is where do carbohydrates come from in our diet? And it is primarily from plant photosynthesis. So here is the chemical reaction of plant photosynthesis. Of course, we require the sunshine in there as well. So carbohydrates in plants are used for both energy as well as for plant structure. And so that's where we get some of the diversity in carbohydrates from our diet. Um, so for example, the cell wall of plants is gonna be composed of many different kinds of polysaccharides like cellulose, hemicellulose, and pectins. Um, and these are all different kinds of carbohydrates that have a variety of glycosidic linkages, some which we can digest, some which we don't have the enzymes to digest. Um, so the intracellular components of the plant, that is primarily where we're gonna have some starch and simple carbohydrates. Those are going to be types of carbohydrates that we do have the enzymes to digest. Um, and then the extracellular matrix of plants, that's where we're gonna have some lignans and other types of fibers, again, which we do not have the enzymes to digest. So that's kind of where the diversity of carbohydrates come from in our diet. Now, what are some of the major forms of carbohydrates in the diet? So a lot comes from cereal grains, wheat, rye, barley, oats, corn, rice, sorghum, and millet. The various proportions um, are, can be different in different regions of the world. Um, so wheat and corn are gonna be the primary sources of those uh, within those cereal grains in um, West, many Western countries. Um, now, most of these grains are consumed as refined grains. And what does that mean? Over here, we have a picture look, comparing a whole grain from a refined grain. In general, there are three different parts of a whole grain. We have the outer husk, which is called the bran. Um, we have the endosperm, and then we have the germ, which is kind of like the little seed. So the bran, this is where we're gonna have a lot of fiber, um, and there's also some B vitamins and some minerals in this bran. The endosperm is mostly starch, um, and then the germ is going to be a place where we have some more B vitamins, we're gonna have some vitamin E, we're gonna have some phytochemicals, as well as some healthy fats. So those are the three main components of whole grains. When we take those whole grains and we refine them, we take off the bran and we get rid of the germ. So we're really just left with that starchy endosperm. And so really we're throwing a whole bunch of the very nutrient dense components of whole grains in the garbage when we eat them as refined grains. Another major form of carbohydrate intake is in the form of sucrose. Sucrose, of course, is a disaccharide of glucose plus fructose. It is naturally occurring in many plants, um, but then we also get a lot of sucrose in our diet in the form of added sugar. Um, other sources of carbohydrates in the diet are gonna be from vegetables, legumes, uh, fruits, um, and these all these different plant foods have a diversity of carbohydrates in them, both simple and complex carbohydrates. So let's take a look at where we get some of these different types of simple carbohydrates in our diet. So first let's take a look at the monosaccharides, uh, glucose, fructose, and galactose. We are going to be getting those from, for, so for glucose and fructose, we'll be getting those from fruit, honey, syrups, as well as drinks in the form of high fructose corn syrup. And we'll talk a little bit later today about um, how we make high fructose corn syrup. Um, but that's our sources of glucose and fructose. And then galactose, we are gonna get some, we are gonna get galactose prim primarily from milk, um, as well as some vegetables and grains. But really the main form of galactose is from milk. Then let's take a look at where we get disaccharides. So our, the disaccharides that we're gonna focus on here, we're gonna look at sucrose, which is primarily coming from fruits, vegetables, sugarcane, and beets. The sugarcane and beets, they are gonna be the, um, the initial source that we use to make sucrose and then add that sucrose to other compounds. And so it's not so much that we're actually eating a lot of direct sugarcane and direct beets, but it's that those are the sources that we use to, to make sucrose for table sugar. Um, then we have lactose, which is gonna be from milk products. Remember that lactose is a disaccharide formed by glucose and galactose. Um, and then we have maltose, which is a product from starch breakdown, a disaccharide that's composed of two glucose um, monomers bound together. Um, so we'll get maltose from starch breakdowns like sprouted barley and wheat. And then we also have trehalose, which are two glucose, two glucose uh, units that are bound together with an alpha-1-1 glycosidic bond. Um, so a slightly different shape of a bond. And those we will get from mushrooms and from yeast. 
Then let's also take a quick look at the sugar alcohols or polyols. Those are the sorbitol, mannitol, and xylitol. These guys are naturally occurring in some fruits and vegetables at pretty small amounts, but then we can also get them um, synthesized and, and uh, added into commercially produced products. Um, like a lot of uh, chewing gums, for example, or other, other types of products um, as sugar replacers. Um, for example, sorbitol is something that's used in a lot of those, um, those wafer cookies. So these also used as an alternative uh, sugar replacement. Let's take a look at sources of oligosaccharides. So remember that oligosaccharides are going to be composed of between three to 10 monosaccharides bound together. Um, so we can look at the alpha-glucans. The alpha-glucans are oligosaccharides that are glucose chains with alpha-glycosidic bonds. Um, that's again referring to the orientation of the glycosidic bond. So those examples of those would be maltodextrins and limit dextrins. These are um, compounds that we get from starch breakdown. And sometimes these will be used as additives. So if you take a look at um, the at, uh, ingredients labels, you may see maltodextrin, for example, and you can think of that as a type of added sugar um, because it's just a, a breakdown product of starch. Then if we look at the non-alpha glucans, those are some of the flatulent sugars that we, oligosaccharides that we talked about last time, like raffinose, stachyose, and verb, uh, verbicose. And those, we're gonna find them in plant seeds, and peas, and beans, and lentils, different types of legumes. And then we also have the fructans, which are chains of fructose, such as inulin. And we'll find fructans in sources like Jerusalem artichokes, some types of vegetables, some types of grains. So those are our sources of oligosaccharides. And then let's take a look at our sources of polysaccharides. So the first big uh, category within polysaccharides are starch. And we know that starch from plants comes in the form of amylose, which are the long glucose chains, or amylopectin, which also have some branching with those alpha-1,6 glycosidic bonds. We get starch from grains, legumes, and vegetables. And remember that starch is gonna be more in that endosperm section of them. Um, there's also glycogen, which is the animal storage form of glucose, and so that would be from muscle or liver cells, so from animal flesh. And then there's all of the non-starch polysaccharides, which are the, the, whole, um, the whole plethora of different types of fiber that we don't have the enzymes to digest. And so those examples of these non-starch polysaccharides would be things like cellulose, hemicellulose, gums, mucilages, beta-glucans. Remember we talked about a beta-glucan from oats last time. Um, and so source it, oops. Sources of these non-starch polysaccharides are gonna be from plant cell walls. They help give plant cells their structure, as well as different kinds of whole grains, vegetables, and fruits. So there's large diversity of non-starch polysaccharides out there in plant foods.